Hey everybody, welcome back for another exciting Vesta tutorial. Today we will be doing part two of the beginner tutorial series. If you haven't checked out tutorial one yet, go check it out. It should be one of my latest videos um, or it should be in the beginning of the beginner tutorial series. Um, if you're new to the channel, please hit the subscribe button. If you're not new but haven't subscribed yet, please hit the subscribe button. Um, I plan on having a lot of cool videos coming out and you definitely don't want to miss it. So without further ado, let's get started. So in the last video, uh, we made a zinc oxide unit cell. I showed you how to build the unit cell from scratch. We made a cubic unit cell, showed you how to put the atoms in. Then I showed you basically how to orient the page uh, with these sort of buttons up here and the sort of horizontal toolbar. What we'll be doing today is going through this vertical toolbar and some stuff in here. And uh, what you'll see is actually a lot of the stuff in here is more or less redundant. It's also basically the same. You could do the same thing with uh, this upper toolbar here. So without further ado, let's get started. So this rotate sort of icon, basically it, it is exactly what it is. You basically select it, you come over here, and then when you hold down the left cursor or you left click and hold, you basically can rotate the crystal just as I am now. And uh, well, that's pretty much it. It's pretty much self-explanatory. If you double click one of the atoms, uh, it'll show up its information. So here, for example, I just double click the zinc and you can see that it shows me this, uh, all the information with the zinc, such as, it, such as its position, its, its label, those are the first zinc. If I click this zinc, you can see that it's also the first zinc. And this shows you that uh, based on the space group that, uh, which basically dictates the symmetry operations, that these zincs are in fact the same zinc. Okay, uh, and it's basically the same thing for oxygen as well. So uh, now what if you want to select more than one atom at once? So if you want to select more than one atom at once, what you do is you select an atom like this zinc. Let's actually select the origin. So this is actually the origin of our coordinate system. You can see that it's that's because its uh, unit vectors are zero, zero, zero. And we want to also select this oxygen as well. So what I do is I select this, then I press shift and I double click again. And then I can double click again. Let go of shift. Now I can rotate around and you can see I have these three selected. Now if I want to delete these, let's say I press delete. There they are, they're deleted. Now if I want them to come back, I can press control Z. There they are, they're back now. Okay, so to unselect these, just come over here and basically select something else. Now, this, the one under the rotate, this is the select button. Now, this is for selecting sort of large swaths of the screen. So you can see here, I kind of selected the entire unit cell. Now, um, if I want to unselect something, I can press shift and click it. So it's pretty nifty. Um, basically it lets you pretty much do whatever you want. Um, there's This has an interesting feature later where you can basically search for lattice planes based on the atoms you select. Uh, that's going to be in a future tutorial for the beginner series. So right now we've basically covered these two options. This is the translate option. It's basically the same exact thing as these translate buttons here, but it does give you more sort of freedom. And okay, you can also use the middle part of the mouse, the scroll wheel. That's the zoom in and out. That's actually exactly what this magnifying does. Uh, but this magnifying, you can basically use the left click of your mouse, the left clicker. It's the same exact thing if you were to either use these magnifications here, or if you were to use the center of your mouse. This is something I really like. This is the bond distance. So you click here, and then you left click any two atoms. It'll tell you the basically the Euclidean distance between them. So like you can see here between these two oxygens, it is 2.17 angstroms. So it's very, very cool. Um, you can see the, the um, atomic coordinates of the atoms involved, and you can see the atomic coordinates basically uh, in another way as well. So it's very interesting. Uh, here is the angle. So let's, let's look at this angle here. Should be a 90 degree angle. So this would be one, two, three. So you can see the angle between O1, this oxygen, zinc one, and this O1 as well because of the symmetry operations. 
So it gives you the coordinates of each atom and it gives you the angle between them. So it's very useful as you, as you can imagine if you want to do analysis of these crystals. Now it has the dihedral angle. So the dihedral angle, um, let's say, let's make it these four atoms here. So I'll use my select tool to show you which atoms I mean. Let's do this atom, this atom, this atom, this atom, and I'm doing the shift left click to do that. So we're gonna get the angle between, the dihedral angle between these atoms. So let's do this. And you can see it's 180 degree dihedral angle between these four. So that's the dihedral angle. And then you have this one, which is the interfacial angle. So if you wanna use the interfacial angle, you have to have these crystal shapes. And these are things you're gonna to have to manually add into the uh, program. So I'll show you how to manually add the crystal shapes, or as I call them, faces, into the program. So what you do is you go to Edit, Edit Data, Crystal Shape, and then you're gonna to go to New. And the first one we're going to add, we'll make it one angstrom from the origin. This is just sort of arbitrary. This is going to be the crystal faces of the cell of the unit cell we see. So it should be this crystal face, this crystal face. That's basically these exposed Miller indices. So we'll press, we will press apply, excuse me. And you can see here, we get this sort of box. Now, if I select this box, let's press okay. So uh, this, I'm just gonna press A here. This A dimension, which is here, this is the zero, this is the one zero zero plane. So this this face, which I have selected here, this is the one zero zero face right here. Here it is. Now this the C dimension, this this should be the zero zero one face, right? So you can see here when I have it selected, it is the zero zero one face. And actually, if you caught that, I accidentally selected this side here, which is the minus one zero zero face. So it's the opposite pointing A vector, so to speak. Now, what if I want some internal plane? What if I want the one 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 plane? Is it possible that I could have a shape here that gives me both the outer or the naturally exposed planes, such as the one zero zero plane, or maybe some internal plane in this reference, such as the 111. So what I'll, I'll do is I'll go back to edit, and I go back to edit data, crystal shape, and I go to new, and now I'm going to add the 111 plane. I'll make it one from the origin. Hit enter, and then press apply, press okay. Now you can see that I have this weird sort of polyhedron-like structure. And this is basically two shapes merged into one. So now something like this plane here, this will be the, this is the 111 face. And you can see here, this is the 001 face. So now, how can I compute the angle between these two faces. So what is the angle between the 111 face and the 001 face of zinc oxide, rock salt, cubic lattice structure? And so I come over here to interfacial angle and what I wanna do is I wanna, I'm gonna rotate, select interfacial angle. This is my first plane, then this plane and it shows that the angle between the 001 plane and the 111 plane is 54.736 degrees. And I think this is just such an interesting tool, and I hope you guys will too. You can basically do any angle you want. You can do them custom colored, um, cool stuff like this. This is like a wireframe approach. Um, yeah, so I, I think that was enough uh, for today. Um, maybe we'll make these, these menus their own videos. You can do a lot with them. Um, but yeah, so until next time, take care, everybody.